Welcome back everyone. Before we start learning the concepts in Svelte, there is one more topic that I want you to be aware of. And that is the .svelte file. In the previous video, I talked about the .svelte file in one or two sentences. In this video, let's understand a bit more about this file type. A .svelte file is a custom file format where we write our code using a superset of HTML to describe a portion of the UI. For example, in our Hello World project, we have one .svelte file, namely app.svelte, which is responsible for the heading and the paragraph in the UI. So a .svelte file is responsible for a portion of the UI. Next, let's understand the code that goes inside a .svelte file. Each .svelte file consists of three sections, script, markup, and style. The script section is where the data and the logic for the markup is maintained. You could say it is like the JavaScript of your UI. The markup section is the HTML of your UI. It defines the structure. The last section is the style section where you specify the styles related to the HTML written in the markup section. The script section goes within the script tag, the styles section goes within the style tag, and everything else is part of the markup section. As you can see, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That is all you need to define a fully functional and styled portion of the user interface. So in Svelte, instead of dividing the code base into three huge layers, which then come together to form the UI, it is instead divided into one or more Svelte files, where each file is responsible for its own markup, styles, and logic. Now, what you do have to keep in mind though, is that the browser does not understand what a .svelte file is. So roll up, with the Svelte plugin is going to parse this file, extract each of the three sections and assemble them back into a format that browsers can understand. Since we are using the Svelte template repo, all of this is already taken care for us. All right, now that we have a bit more information about this Svelte file, let's discuss two more points which will set us up to finally get started with some code in the next video. The first point is about components. Right now, we have a Svelte file called app.svelte. In Svelte, a .svelte file represents a component. A Svelte app can contain one or more of these components. When learning Svelte as a beginner though, there is a lot to learn with just one Svelte file. We don't have to worry about multiple Svelte files and the component architecture to begin with. So to keep this simple, we are first going to focus on all the concepts that can be learned using just one .svelte file. When we have a good understanding of how the script, markup and style sections work together, we will then dive deep into the world of components in Svelte. I promise you, we will come back to the topic of components later on in the series when it will make much more sense. Right now, all we need is just one app.svelte file to understand a whole bunch of concepts that Svelte has to offer. The second point is about what we are going to learn pretty much for the first half of the series. A minute ago, I mentioned that a Svelte file contains markup as well as the script which contains the logic for that markup. Let me tell you that a major portion of working with a .svelte file is wiring up the data and logic to the markup. That is, connecting the data present in the script section to the HTML present in the markup section. This is the declarative programming approach I was mentioning in the very first video. All you have to do is let Svelte know how you want to bind your data to the HTML and Svelte will take care of the rest. And it is this part of letting Svelte know 
what exactly we want the UI to look like is what we will learn for the first half of this series. So let's finally get started with some code in the next video.